I do remember maybe that there was some back and forth arguing between um, Steve and Lee and Mark, but I always just interpret that as like just um, for the fun of it more than substantive problems. At that point, Lee and Mark and Steve, it was more like sibling rivalry or something. They were just bickering about stupid stuff all the time. But yeah, that first day when we were doing all the basic tracks on this, like Bewitched and uh, crashing through and stuff and just looking up in the booth and seeing Steve and Mark and, and Lee and Steve. And I just remember after Bewitched and um, both Mark and Lee were just laughing and just it was like yeah you did it it was it was kind of exciting they were like that was it you did it Pandora's box has got a lock I'm gonna knock gonna beat the clock I won't rest until Pandora's chest has been upset because I'm the one I got a crush on on you, I got a crush on you, got a crush on you, got a crush on you, I got a crush on you. I was listening to the record yesterday and it made me wonder what guitar we were using. Calvin, did we still have the silver tone? Did we record this with the silver tone? Yeah. Yeah, that was there, but but I think um I have a vague memory that we didn't do a lot of recording with our own guitar. I think we, in both both sessions, we used other guitars, but we might have. I feel like we used, maybe Lee brought a guitar that we used mostly. This is so funny, and it's illustrative of how much we are uh, music tech people. Calvin certainly ha- has technical ability, but I'm often baffled by the way that people develop, uh, say, a guitar sound consciously. We had one pedal, one effect that was a distortion pedal. And I don't even remember what brand it was. I remember the color of this basic pedal, which seemingly just had an on and off button. And it was kind of a butterscotch color. Calvin, do you remember what that, what that was? Yeah, that was my brother's MXR distortion pedal (laughs) that Streeter (laughs) lent us. And for several years, and then finally he wanted it back, so I had to give it back to him. And then I tried to find one. I think I eventually did find one, but you, you ended up using that, uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, we toured with uh, a band called Heavenly at one point. And um, Pete Momshaloft from Heavenly, had, uh, when he got to the United States, he bought this little compressor pedal and for his tour. And at the end of the tour, he was like, do you guys want this? And Brett had been using it on tour, and he really liked it because it was it made a distortion sound. So we used that as our distortion pedal after that. But that was after Jamboree. I didn't even know we had a distortion pedal. Well, we didn't. Streeter had one. <laughs> the yellow thing sounds familiar, though, but I guess I'd never really thought about it. I don't think I ever used it. You know, nowadays it makes me laugh. Like, people are, like, asking about all this, like, what did you use on this and that? It was like... You know, what we used was what was there or what's cheap or what, you know, like it wasn't like I'm looking for all these like pedals and amps that cost like $50,000 and I'll choose this one. It wasn't that at all. It's like, you know, whatever you could get at a pawn shop or at a music store for cheap. And, you know, so um, as far as that goes, you know, we were definitely similar. But I feel like that song was more like um, Heather had a guitar part on a song called I Love You. That was really rock and roll, and I was really like uh, appreciated how simple it was, yet it sounded very powerful. And uh, so that song, her her playing on that song, inspired me a lot to try to make a song like that. But I never, I never was able to because it it's so unique and perfect. I loved that song. I love you. Yeah, worked out really well. I really love Calvin's rock and roll songs. <laughs> And I always really liked that song. I don't know why we chose to put it first. My brother had uh, had that guitar pedal that I borrowed, and so I think I was just playing around with that. And then uh, Brett had been working at this place called Gesco in Olympia. It was like a a venue and 
a performance space and a meeting space. They had lots of different events there, but uh, Brett had one of the people, he and Denise and a, another friend of theirs started that space. And I remember just standing at that space watching artists, people perform music and that song, uh, just the words sort of started to develop just from standing around Gesco and watching other artists play music. I think I remember just thinking, that would be a good song. Got a crush on you, making me so blue. I got a crush on you, what am I to do? Got a crush on you, 